Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In our first story, the OP was mistaken for a co-worker because she was wearing a beanie, was verbally assaulted, and ran away after being told she was wasting this guy's time. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Why are you wearing a blue beanie then? My fiance and I are huge gamers, and we moved to a city that had a buy of the best pretty close, so naturally my fiance and I visited quite a bit. That day I was wearing a plaid shirt, love me some plaid, some blue jeans, sneakers, and the star of the show, my favorite blue beanie that I also stole from my fiance. Again, this is the buy of the best. Uniforms are blue polos with store logos and black slacks. I was looking through the games while my fiance was a few aisles over looking at records, when all of a sudden a wild man-child appeared. Cast, me is me, F, fiance, MC, man-child. I'm trying to decide what RPG I want to buy to put on my shelf and maybe play in the next year while literally sitting on the floor. I'm tall, so it hurts to lean over to see the bottom shelves. I hear someone behind me, and I don't really think much of it as the store was decently packed. MC, hey, I need to get a laptop out of the lockup. I've been waiting by them and no one has helped me yet. I'm still on the floor with my head in the game rack, sifting through poorly organized games, not even noticing he was talking to me as an employee just asked me if I needed help about two minutes before. So I figured he was talking to the same employee. MC, hello, are you going to help me or just waste my time? I realized that something was going on, so I glanced behind me thinking an employee was being rude. Meanwhile, this guy was maybe two feet right behind me, so when I turned around to look, I just have some random dude's crotch up in my face. I look up to see why he's so close. He was wearing a baseball cap, brown work pants, a white shirt, and a blue jacket. The jacket comes into play later, and had a look of pretentiousness. Kind of like his time is worth more than a peasant's life. MC, finally, get your head out of your butt. Now hurry up, my wife's still waiting and I need a laptop for my son. I finally stand up, not only because of the view I was forced to see, but because my fight or flight kicked in for a moment. As soon as I stand up, I back away a good six feet or so and just look at him, trying to figure out how to respond. Hi, deer in headlights anxiety rules. MC, what are you going to do, run away because I asked for help? Why'd they hire an idiot like you? Me, under my breath and slightly staggering my words, but I don't work here. MC, what was that? Come on, speak up. Me, a bit louder, but still quiet. I don't work here. I'm just looking at games. This whole time, I'm just in a mental whirlwind as to why this is happening. I was not in a uniform, nor was I organizing anything, just flipping through games. At the same time, my anxiety is telling me to run to my fiance and hide. MC, you don't work here. Me, no, I'm sorry. MC, and why are you wearing a blue beanie then? F you, you wasted so much of my effing time. At this point, he stormed off to find an actual employee, and I just sat there trying to figure out why a blue beanie, of all things, made him think I worked there. After being confused for a bit, I basically ran to find my fiancé. After finding him, I told him all that happened, and I could see both confusion and anger slowly coming over his face, followed by a very pissed F no. Then he storms off while I realize what or who he's going towards. I'm still incredibly highly anxious over it, so I try to talk him down as he walks towards the man. He asked what he looked like, and stupid me didn't know why until it was too late. My fiancé is the sweetest man ever, but when it comes to me, he's very protective. That, and he's a very tall Nordic man with a full beard and can be pretty intimidating when angry. He walks up to the man, who's now with an actual employee getting his laptop out of the cases, Meanwhile, I hide in an aisle while still keeping an eye on him. F to MC, hey, I've been waiting forever and you're just sitting here talking to your friend? The poor employee looked beyond confused as to what's happening, but just kept out of it. MC, what the F are you talking about? Who even are you? F, a customer. So are you going to help me or are you just going to sit there with your thumb up your butt? MC, dude, are you stupid? I don't work here, so F off. F. Then why are you wearing the blue jacket? Man-child went from pissed to confused real fast on that. Ironic. MC, why would my jacket mean I work here? 
F. I don't know. You thought a beanie met my fiance did. Sounds pretty stupid coming from someone else, huh? You effing idiot. At this point, Manchild saw me in the aisle over watching. His face just went pale as snow. F. Learn some respect. And while you're at it, try to find those brain cells you lost on the way. My fiancé walks away and I immediately run behind him and we got out of the store before the employee called security on us for his yelling. I didn't hear anything behind me, but I also didn't dare to look back. Being very anxious about confrontations, I was pretty upset at first with my fiancé, but when I calmed down, I realized it was him standing up for me and was pretty damn funny, actually. We avoided that store for a good month and just went to one a bit further away after. Since when are any employees working the main floor of a store allowed to wear beanies? I would think that would be a clear indicator that you don't work there. This jerk has so much entitlement stuff in his head, there's no room left for his brain in there. And our second story. Fine, I'll pick up the pace. This happened several months ago. I work as a fabricator welding frames together that are installed into modified storage units to turn them into different types of facilities offer the military. I usually pace myself based not only on the amount of work I have that day, but I also make sure I'll have something to occupy myself with the next day too. So I was taking my time this night and then encountered a critical failure in my machine towards the end of the night. Because of this, I was unable to finish the frame. The next day rolls around and I get crap for not finishing the frame, even though they didn't need it that day, which I knew the night before, and that's part of the reason why I took my time. I ask him what I can work on that day and the day supervisor just says frames. I look at the rack and I see that it's completely full, which means there's no reason for me to make any frames that day. The daytime supervisor doesn't care and was complaining to other people about how slow I was working. My actual supervisor comes over and tells me the day supervisor is considering booting me from the department. I explain to him that I work slow because of how little work they actually give me to do. He tells me to write down any extra stuff I produced that day to try and get on the day supervisor's good side again. Anyway, the list of stuff comes to me on what they ask of me to do that day. Usually they only ask for one set of frames. They ask for two sets instead. The rack was still full though, so not a single frame needed to be made. What likely happened was the day supervisor complained to the guy who made the list about my productivity levels, so he upped the numbers without even checking what needed to be made. So what do I do? I not only make two sets of frames, I make two and almost finish a third. By the way, did I mention how big these frames are? They're about 18 feet long. They get in the way really easily, so I ran into a problem. Where can I possibly put these damn things? One of the units, obviously, now most of the units we work on, don't have any sides to them at that stage, but there was one that was special. It did have sides, so I slid them into that one to make life as miserable as possible for the day supervisor the next day. The next day comes around, they're livid, but they can't do anything because the day before they were complaining about my lack of productivity. It took them an hour to get the frames out of that unit. It was such an inconvenience that it drew the attention of the manager, the day supervisor's boss, and he chewed him out, not me. He asked me why I did what I did, and I say I was told to pick up the pace and the list said to make two frames, so I surpassed your expectations and did three instead. You should have properly communicated to me what you wanted. So they scrapped the list and are now forced to communicate more directly with us. And our next story. HOA towed my nephew's car because it's too old and ugly. I've been living in this fairly upscale slash luxurious looking community of about 40 single family homes for three years now. It's just me and my wife in a big house, so I agreed to let my nephew, sister's kid, live with us for one year while he attended college to save some money. They're poor people who cannot afford the high cost of living in this city, but the kid got a scholarship here and is doing outstanding work in college. Anyway, he came from Illinois in an old Subaru, which he parks in my driveway, without blocking my garage entry. He arrived five days ago, and two days afterwards, we woke up to his car towed. I contacted HOA, and they directed me to the bylaw they have, which states that cars older than six years are not allowed on the premises, and the HOA has the right to remove, tow, any vehicle that looks unkept, aka dirty, scratched, etc. 
I admit I didn't read this and I wasn't aware of such policy. Well, I get their point. They want to make our community look nice and clean, so we had to park his car in the garage and mine in the driveway. And our last story. Karen tries to get my car towed. This morning, I decided to go to a certain large box store and pulled into a handicap spot. For those wondering, I lost my lower right leg in Afghanistan. I pull in, hung up my handicap tag, grab my cane. I don't really need it unless I'm walking a lot, but I like to keep it just in case. And as I walk away, I hear a honk. I mentally shrugged, figuring the driver behind me wanted the spot, walk inside on the hunt for the SO's requests. About 15 to 20 minutes later, I come out and had a, aw, oh, crap moment. A cop car parked next to my 2019 Mustang with a cop and someone yelling. I hurry over as quickly as the cart will let me before parking it and walking towards the back to see what the damages were when I get greeted with a finger to the face and screeching. The officer with the Karen gets her to back up and turns to me. Screeching Karen, K. Nice cop, NC. Me, me. NC. Sir, is this your car? Me. Yes, it is. How bad's the damage? I couldn't see the bumper on the other side, so I figured that she had hit it. NC. Sir, you are aware that you're parked in a handicapped parking zone? Me, surprised and kind of confused. E yes, that's why I have a handicapped tag hanging. NC, I see. Now Karen comes screeching back into the conversation. Okay, I doubt that it's his anyway, points at me. I don't care if you were in the military. So is my husband, and I'm not parking where I don't belong. I have Army veteran plates, so I figured as long as I had the tag, I was fine. NC's partner gets her to back off and tells her to walk to her vehicle, a 90s junk van across the lane and the other handicap parking. I pull my driver's license with my disability on it and hand it to him. He looks at it, at my leg, which I pull my pants leg up enough for him to see my fake leg, sighs, and hands it back. NC. Sorry about that, sir. We got a call about someone illegally parking in a handicap zone and, well, he gestures towards Kay, who's screeching again about something. Me. No problem. He starts walking towards his partner as I start loading my groceries. After I load up and prepare to roll out, Karen whips out of her spot. Well, the best she can whip with the rust bucket she's driving, nearly clipping me as I'd started backing up. She's now still screeching at the cops parked in the middle of the road as I wait. Hopefully encounters like this become less frequent as people become more aware and understanding of others' needs and circumstances. Safe travels. Thank you for your service. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.